Hello, this is Evan Rogerson, and I'm Better Gang here, and today I'm going to be showing you how a chain bar lift works. Chain bars are a really cool type of lift. Um, they're very similar to a four bar mechanically in how they work, in such that you have a base tower, and you have another arm that goes out, and that stays parallel to the ground the whole time. However, unlike four bars, you can actually get these bars essentially touching, you can see right there. And then additionally, they can go up, you can get the bar going straight up, purely vertical, and it can even go back around the other way. There aren't very many uses where you want it to actually go back over the other way, However, it can be useful to pretty much just go straight vertical as that can give you additional height that sometimes a four bar can't get. Um, it's also very compact and I quite like using these lifts. Pro they're probably better than four bars in most cases. Basically the chain acts as another bar in order to help keep the sprockets parallel. So today I'm gonna go through, show you how these work. Uh, not necessarily how to build these, but how this just prototype demo kind of works. And then I'm also gonna go through and a couple of cool tips and tricks that these things can do that regular lifts can't. So let's go ahead and start and assume that this is going to be our base tower and that's going to be the one that we have like our claw or whatever on. So as always with these videos, these are just like prototypes. They're not designed to be built extremely well. Uh, they're just something I quickly threw together to kind of showcase the concept that I'm trying to do. So you can start off by seeing that we have a screw on the back right there. That is a purple screw right there. And we have some dark green screws on the other side, which I believe those are 1.5 in the middle and then 0.75 on the outside. And basically what those are doing is they're secured with caps nuts. Um, you would want to use nylocks if these are on an actual robot. And then we have some 1 8 inch spacers right there. So this sprocket has a brass insert inside of it using the screw joint. So basically it can't actually spin though because these other screws are going through the holes on the sprocket. So this sprocket, as you can see, as I move this around, the sprocket always stays connected to our main tower base C channel. However, this is still a screw joint because that purple screw that I talked about earlier, it keeps going through. I believe I have a quarter inch spacer in there for sizing, and then it contacts this aluminum C-channel. And that has a bearing on it just to reduce the slop. And then it also has a small washer on there and then a nylock nut on the end. Um, and that nylock nut is tightened. The lift can still spin. However, um, there's not necessarily going to be a lot of slop. As you can see, um, I can kind of push these in and they're still not going to move in and out much just because of the limited amount of slop. And typically if you were doing a chain bar lift, you would have one of these on one side of your robot and a mirrored version on the other side of the robot and then have bracing running between the two just to help get even more stability. This bar just has the bearings and it has bearings down there. And then we have the exact same thing on this end in which that sprocket is bolted into the C-channel. So as you can see, as this goes up, that sprocket doesn't rotate. Now we have chain. Ideally, you want this chain fairly tight, as if the chain is loose, you'll have a bit of extra slop and these won't stay perfectly um, parallel, unless that's something that you're actually trying to do. So basically, you can see the chain just kind of wraps around the sprockets as it goes around. And that's the basics of how to build a normal chain bar, which is what I have on Fever Dream 2.0 and I also had on the original Fever Dream. Initially, chain bars can easily be built to be 360 degrees in which they can just keep going. All that you need to do to have that is ensure that these don't actually hit each other. So this bar right there hitting your end bar, I guess hitting your base bar, is the only thing that's stopping this. If these were, maybe if that bar was shorter and this bar was shorter, they'd actually be able to slide past each other and keep going like you saw in the video earlier. But the cool things you can do on the chain bar that you can't easily do on a four bar is make it so that the bars don't stay parallel. They're consistently offset by a certain amount. So let's kind of go right here. And let's say maybe you want this lift angled slightly backwards for whatever reason. And you always want it to be angled slightly backwards. Right, now, once that chain is set, we can now set whatever bar length we want up there. So let's maybe go ahead and say, I want this angled back like that the entire time. For some reason, I want my lifts at a 45 degree angle. Now we can go ahead and retighten that chain and then go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and just connect these in right as they are right now. Now, now that we have this chain reattached, you can see as I lower this lift, that bar is still gonna stay angled. And even as I raise that lift, it's gonna stay st all the way up until I curve this back around. And it's not gonna be able to get quite as compact when I lower it back in like that because that top part's gonna to hit. But you can easily set the angle that you want your end lift to be at. Um, and that's just gonna stay consistent the entire time. Now, if you don't want that to stay consistent, you can actually change the sprocket size, which I'm gonna go ahead and swap this sprocket out for one that is one size larger. So as you can see here, I swapped out the chain bar so that we had now have a smaller sprocket at the top and a larger sprocket at the bottom. However, we can also reverse this and have our larger sprocket on the main lift and the smaller sprocket on the part of the lift that's going up. And right now, these aren't connected to each other, so we could choose whichever point we want these to be parallel. If we want them to be parallel at this point right here, then we could go ahead and attach the chain just like this nice and tight. If we want them parallel down there, then we can go and attach the chain tight down here, which is what I'm gonna go ahead and do. So as you can see, we now have these bars attached, and at the bottom, you can see they're pretty much gonna be parallel when we put the lift down. 
However, as this goes up, you can notice that that bar is starting to lean slightly forward. And then by the time we get pure vertical, you can see it's leaning significantly further forward, which could be useful if you want it, something at the ground to pick the game object up. But then as you go higher up, you want it to slowly lean forward. And the amount that that leans forward is going to be proportional to the difference in the sprocket sizes. So if we had a very large sprocket here and a very small sprocket here, this would be rotated even more further down. And then the same is going to be true in reverse. If we make the smaller sprocket at the top and the bigger sprocket at the bottom on the part that's going up, as this goes up, that's actually going to lean back, um, which I find to be more useful and something I'm planning to implement on my robot just to get even more height. Because if you have a claw something up there, that's going to be even further once it leans back and has the ring going out. And like I said before, you could redo the chain with this being rotated at any angle so that maybe it's parallel up there. And then going in here, it starts to lean out a little bit. And going up there, it starts to lean back a little bit. So you have lots of options for customization on chain bars that is significantly more intuitive than non-parallel four bars. Another unique property is if you want a bit of slop in your system, which I don't know why you would, you can actually go ahead and add extra links in here because the chain is responsible for keeping it tight. So if we make the chain not tight, which is always important to do, if you see your chain bars, bars stay parallel, then we can go ahead and add an extra link in here. So now you can see I've added an extra link in there and now there's a bit of slop in the system and I can actually rotate this back and forth a little bit if I ever wanted to have a bit of slop in the system. So as this goes up and down, this can kind of sag. Um, which I don't know why you'd want that behavior, but this is something that you can fairly easily do on a four, on a chain bar that you cannot do on a four bar. Powering a chain bar is done really similarly to how you would power a four bar. So as you can see in there, we have our motor, which is connected to a smaller gear, which then leads to a larger gear to give the lift enough torque. Then on this larger gear, we have a C channel directly mounted to it. And that's going to be our bar part of the C channel. And then the main difference here is on a four bar, you would then either above this or below this, you would have another C channel that's free spinning. But on here, we just need to have the chain, and the chain is mounted on the same shaft as our 84 tooth gear. However, it is drilled out in the inside um, so that the shaft can pass through it so we have the same pivot point, but it doesn't actually spin with it. So as you can see, as I spin this lift, the gear is spinning and the shaft is spinning, but the sprocket is not spinning because it's drilled out. And that causes the lift to go up and for the lift to stay parallel to the ground the entire time, or the claw to stay parallel to the ground the entire time. Which, if the lift could only go up uh, without that last 30 degrees, which is typical for a four bar, it can't really score on the wall stakes very well. However, because it's a chain bar, we can just keep going back even further and easily be tall enough to reach onto the wall stakes. Um, and it's also gonna be more compact because we don't have to worry about the spacing for fitting another bar somewhere in there. And because we have two chain bars on this robot, one on the left-hand side and one on the right-hand side, even if one of these chains were to snap, the chain bar would still be able to operate functionally in keeping that claw parallel to the ground. So it's very unlikely that both chains would snap in a match and your lift would break. I hope you enjoyed this video covering a more niche and unique lift type that is definitely underutilized in my opinion. Chain bars are really cool. I actually didn't know how to build one or use one or even understand how they worked until earlier in the high stakes season. So I hope you guys can appreciate these and begin using these in your robot design. As always, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe in order to please the YouTube algorithm. And thanks again for watching.